Okay, now you can check the mouse or the pen. This is the edit desk, which is the main workspace area in Smoke. If you don't see it, press escape to exit the full screen player. The edit desk is divided in two main parts. At the top, you have the source area and under it, the record timeline. This is a multi-layer timeline with full editing functionalities. Let's see how to access the different players and how to navigate the timeline. If you press Escape at this time, it will bring you to the record player. And if you press Ctrl Escape, this will display the full player. Another useful view is the record and source players. To access this view, press Shift Escape. OK, now let's return to the record player by pressing Escape. To navigate the timeline, use the pan bar. Drag left or right to pan and drag up or down to zoom in or out. The vertical yellow bar that you see is called the positioner. Click and drag the positioner to scroll the timeline. To reframe the entire timeline in the viewer, press the home button located on the right corner of the timeline. Next, we are going to composite a shot on the timeline. Notice the red mark on the timeline. Drag the positioner on the shots right after that marker. Drag the pan bar up to zoom in into the segments. We have three shots here. We have the final composite, a backplate, and a green screen. To change the player focus point, click and drag the little crossbar on the positioner and release it on the layer that you want to have in focus. You can also press page up or page down on the keyboard. Put the focus point on the backplate. We're going to color correct this clip using a soft effect. Click on the backplate to select it. Each of the timeline segments have access to a powerful range of tools called the soft effects. You can see the list of available soft effects on the left side of the timeline. Press the CC button on the list. Then press the E button to access the color corrector editor. This is a classic color corrector, but we also have an advanced tool called the color warper. To toggle to the color warper, click on the CC button on the left side of the interface. The color warper allows you to do fine color corrections, and it contains as well three selectives for color isolations. We will do something fairly simple here to modify the mid-color range. Click and drag the second trackball towards the blue color. If you use a mouse, you may have to drag several times. It is not as sensitive as the pen. Now let's increase the contrast a little bit. We're going to drag the black slider slightly to the left. That's the look we want for this. Press exit to go back to the timeline. If you want to see the shot before and after, you can turn the effect on or off by clicking on the little blue LED on the CC button. All right, so the next step will be to pull the key for that green screen. First, move the focus point to the top layer and then select the top segment. On the left side, choose the Axis Soft Effects and then press the E button to access the Axis Editor. Make sure the display is set to Preview Effects. To access the Cure module, press the Cure button located under the Player Controls. The default Cure is set to Luminance. Click on the Master Cure instead. The first step to pull a key is to set the initial key color. Click on the left gray swatch and with the cursor drag into the green screen area. This sets the start point for your key. Let's have a look at the mat created so far. Go on the view list on the left and change the result view for the mat view. We have several advanced tools in the master cure that can be used to refine this mat. In this case, we're going to use a quick patch to clean the black. Under the sampling section, click on the mat sampling and change it to patch one. Then hold the control key and with the cursor, draw little rectangles to sample the gray pixels that you want to turn into pure black. When this is done, switch back to the result view. By the way, there is a very nice automatic color suppression tool in the master keyer that will take care of the spill color. If you want to see its effect, just turn the auto CC button on and off. We still need to take care of the track marks. To do so, we're going to use a garbage mask. Make sure to start at frame one. Click on the G mask button to access the garbage mask controls. You can zoom out to see the full image in the screen using the zoom slider on the right side. To add a new garbage mask, press the Add Geometry button on the right side of the player controls. Then click on the screen to add the first point of your garbage mask. 
continue to draw the mask by adding points surrounding the track marks. To close the shape, click on the first point of the mask or press the close button. Now we need to change the color of the mask so it's transparent. Set the mask color attribute to zero. Scroll the clip to verify that the mask is still good at every frame. If you need to, reposition some of the points of the mask. Since auto key is on, this will be animated over time. When you're done, press the return button to go back to the axis menu and exit to go back to the timeline. If we process the selected segment, this will also process the other layers under it. And then you can play back your final piece.